Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from the Foo Fighters, titled Sonic Highways. You know, for as big of an act as the Foo Fighters are, I don't think I've ever, in public or in private, really given a comprehensive opinion about the band. I mean, I've talked at length about many of their contemporaries, some of them great and some of them really awful, but I haven't really talked about Dave Grohl's post-grunge turned arena rock band in, well, Ever. I think it's time that I finally rectify that, shall we? So, the Foo Fighters are, to me, the defining example of a pretty damn good band. Not a great one, not an all-time classic act, and it'll definitely be interesting to see how long their historical legacy lasts in comparison with many of their contemporaries, but a pretty damn good rock band. There's a lot of common opinions about the Foo Fighters as well. Their best material was in the late 90s, they really are more of a singles act over structuring cohesive album statements, and a lot of their material, especially in some of their deeper cuts, they start sounding a lot the same. Now, having revisited the entire Foo Fighters discography, well, a lot of those opinions aren't wrong, although Wasting Light was a solid step towards reinvigorating the band. But tapping into the reason why these assumptions are made gets a little bit trickier. For one, as potent as a frontman as Dave Grohl is, some of his more serious, hyper-earnest, we're the last real band in rock, self-aggrandizing, that does get exasperating. And the sad fact is, with the decline of hard rock in the mainstream, it was something of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But on the other hand, earnestness is one of the greatest of the Foo Fighters' strengths. You believed Dave Grohl when he's howling or singing, and the band's knack for a really catchy melodic hook has kept them a steady draw for years now. On the flip side, okay, lyricism has never ever been their strong point, and many, many songs fell into a lot of easy cliches and felt more broadly sketched than they really should have. But once again, there's another side to this, as broadness can work well in the fist-pumping anthems that the Foo Fighters can make like clockwork, and a lot of them come across really strong. So okay, you can bet I was definitely intrigued by their newest album, Sonic High Waves, reportedly recorded in eight different American studios in order to capture the unique musical vibe of each city. And not only that, with each song, they brought in guests to enhance the roots-driven sound, from Joe Walsh to Ben Gibbard to Zach Brown, the last of which was the biggest draw for me being a massive Zach Brown band fan. On the other hand, I also know the Foo Fighters. We aren't likely to see little big town levels of experimentation on this album. And at the end of the day, they'd still probably sound just like the Foo Fighters. And turns out, I was pretty much right on the money there, because Sonic Highways by the Foo Fighters sounds a lot like I was expecting. And the more that I've listened to this album, the more that I've realized that expectations surrounding this record plays a lot into how a lot of people are responding to it. If you're going in expecting a lot of broad experimentation, or for Dave Grohl to make his big statement on American culture driven by each of the eight cities, you're going to be disappointed here. And if you're going in expecting the Foo Fighters to recreate their more personal 90s output, well, you're going to be disappointed as well. It makes Sonic highways fall into a really weird place as an album. It's got the ambition to draw together bigger album statements, but the execution of those statements feels a little bit flat and almost calculated to me. It's an album that's trying for many moments to feel grandiose and have all this flavor to make that classic record, but at the end of the day, it's the Foo Fighters, and a lot of their material sounds alike, even here. Now, I should explain this, and let's get the easy parts of this conversation out of the way right now. If you've heard a Foo Fighters record in the past 10 years, Sonic Highway is, is very similar. Propulsive drumming, crunchy guitar work, solid bass, plenty of snarl and distortion around the edges, and Dave Grohl continuously proving that he's got one of the best and most versatile voices in modern rock. And it's such a well-established template and sound that most of the collaborating acts can feel a little bit tacked on, not really contributing the same amount of texture and flair unless you really listen for it. Now, that's not saying there aren't some killer moments on this album, because there are. I dug the hard punk edge of the Feast and the Famine that probably comes across as the most fully realized thanks to Grohl's long-standing love of punk music and the collaboration with Bad Brains. I like the brief moments of organ and solid finger-picking of at Zach Brown on Congregation that comes close to country rock. I love the explosive guitar work of Gary Clark Jr. and the change-up of What Did I Do and God Is With My Witness and the spacier sound and simple but very effective guitar melody on I Am A River that really proved surprisingly gripping for me. Hell, I even most like Subterranean because it sounds exactly like a Ben Gibbard Foo Fighters collaboration would sound like. And it was a pretty solid song. The acoustic texture resting against the electric background that tempered some of the harsher elements. It really came together surprisingly well. But here's where the first misfire is. For as much as this album touts its big guest list, these guests are fused so tightly into the mix that a lot of their unique texture falls away, especially considering that Grohl chose them as representative of their specific 
specific music scene. Most of this is an issue with the production, as it feels like most of the guest guitar textures are nestled halfway in the back of the mix, and with the Foo Fighters not holding back at all with their explosive power, you lose some of that contributing flavor. They're like the shot of Bailey's, it just overshadows everything else in the drink. And that's a damn shame, because I really wanted to see what Dave Grohl could do with incorporating greater experimentation into this album, and that doesn't really happen, mostly because the majority of contributing instrumentation is guitars and backing vocals, with only the horns on In The Clear being the biggest exception here. Grohl stated in interviews that he knew very little about, say, jazz or New Orleans before coming there to record in that studio. And with that song in the clear, you can definitely tell. It doesn't help the matter is that this record, despite only having eight tracks, runs pretty damn long, with the average track length being over five minutes. And it feels gratuitous there when the instrumental ideas don't really do enough to support that. So okay, forget instrumental ideas, what about lyrical ideas? Well, let's ask the question where Dave Grohl is strongest as a songwriter. And that's mostly linked to self-flagellating personal tracks and songs about complicated relationships. And you definitely do get some of those those on this album. But I'm having a really hard time figuring out what statement the Foo Fighters were trying to make with Sonic Highways, if at all. In interviews, it's been cited as a love letter to the history of American music, created through landing in places definitive to that history. But I gotta be honest, there's some glaring absences to Dave Grohl's road tour here. There's no Detroit, there's no Philadelphia, and most surprisingly, there's no Memphis, you know, the birthplace of rock and roll, where every self-respecting band that makes their musical love letter to American rock music pays tribute from U2 to Spinal Tap? It's a pretty glaring absence on this record, I gotta say that. But this is because this is a selective history. The story with Dave Grohl is looking to work with specific acts and styles, punk with Bad Brains in DC, country with Zac Brown in Nashville, and then try to wedge in some iconography surrounding said cities. It's not really complete love letter, all things considered. And you know what, even with that, it it really feels thin. You can tell that Dave Grohl is stretching to include references to the cities themselves, but I reckon with few exceptions, if you did not know they were representative of certain cities on this album, you wouldn't have a damn clue what these songs were about beyond standard Foo Fighters material. And you know what? Let me stress that. That's not a bad thing. There are songs like I Am A River that do land well here. Now, the big exception to Grohl's love letter to DC punk music on The Feast and the Famine, but that's because it feels grounded in a punk aesthetic and touches on social unrest rooted in that city's history. And let's be honest, Dave Grohl has a film familiarity with punk music, and it does have something of a unique sound within the album that I definitely liked. But when you put it up against the Joe Walsh collaboration outside the tribute to LA that eventually falls into some of the most stale cliches imaginable surrounding the city, it doesn't really resonate, I gotta be honest. And a lot of this comes back to the technical issues of Dave Grohl's songwriting. He's very, very strong with tackling nuance, in framing relationships, discussing very personal songs, but descriptive language has never really been his strong suit in his songwriting, and when this sort of album to try to capture the spirit of these cities, to encompass their history, you need to be a descriptive songwriter if your music isn't going to emphasize the unique flourishes instrumentally of each city. Dave Grohl gets the tone here and going broad, let me stress this, and his populism is definitely an asset with writing these sorts of tracks. But you know what, overall, I don't think the technical songwriting really gets us all the way there. So in the end, for as much as the Foo Fighters has slammed U2 for Songs of Innocence over the past few months, this is the Foo Fighters version of Rattle and Hum. Not the documentary, by comparison, the HBO series Sonic Highways is pretty damn awesome and engaging, I recommend you check it out. But the album Rattle and Hum, that's what I'm talking about. It's a love letter to American musical history and culture that ultimately doesn't really absorb it into their music effectively. Many critics have said this is the Foo Fighters' drive to enshrine themselves in American music history, considering themselves rock gods, but I don't buy that. Like this album or not, the Foo Fighters are surprisingly not pretentious with this release, mostly because at the end of the day, they didn't step that far out of their comfort zone, and their comfort zone isn't that pretentious. So let's ask the overall question. Is the album any good? Well, yeah, I think it is. At its best moments, it manages to capture enough of the flavors of the cities that it draws upon, while still delivering some strong hooks, solid riffs, and a pretty damn good performance, all things considered. And there are a lot more good moments than there are bad ones. So, you know what, for me, I'm giving this album a light 7 out of 10, and a recommendation, especially if you're a Foo Fighters fan. Do I wish that they pushed the songwriting and the sound a little bit further? Well, yeah, of course I do. But at the end of the day, the Foo Fighters bring a consistency to their melodic, hard rock driven sound, and beyond that, I didn't expect to get that much more, so I wasn't that disappointed. In the end of the day, check this out. It's worth it. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Where do you guys think this album fits with regards to the Foo Fighters' rest of their discography? It's one of those constant questions whether or not it's ever going to top the greats, and I don't think it does, but I'm just curious where you guys stand on it. For me, I liked it. It's not as good as Wasting Light or some of their best, but still worth listening to. 
Um, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.